Hi everybody, Dan Scott here with the Revelation Deception and I want to talk to you in this video about the delivery method of prophecy. And the word translated prophecy in Greek is prophetia. And in its most basic definition, it literally means pre-explanation. Not predictions, but matters of fact concerning things that will occur that God has spoken. And the sole foundation of biblical prophecy is the writs, the word of God, carried by Holy Spirit, the one spirit of truth, not many different spirits. For example, seven of them to seven churches. And in considering the problematic delivery method of the spurious book of Revelation, we must also pay attention to who the Holy Spirit carries prophecy through, being that of holy human not angels. Peter writes, knowing this beforehand that every prophecy of the writ, meaning that which men are told to write, does not become about out of one's own explanatory solution, meaning one's own problems of interpreting or interpretation, which is absolutely impossible with the book of Revelation because it's not written in parables and proverbs of which the spirit of truth is quite capable of unveiling to human, but rather it is written in esoteric and occult symbolism, which must be speculated over. So here's one red flag, because the book of Revelation is open for interpretation on many, many levels, and much of its content cannot be verified in any of the other writs of God. But we continue reading, for prophecy is not at any time brought about by the will of man, human, meaning one man, which again harmonizes with what I just said. Because John Patmos, as being one man, a supposed prophet, penned many things that cannot be verified with the other prophets. So prophecy is not carried through one human concerning matters open for interpretation, but holy human, plural, men, men of God spoke, and more importantly, being carried by the Holy Spirit. And verse 20 here speaks of prophecy of the writ. And like I stated, writ means that which is written. But before a man writes, he must first hear what he is instructed to write as being a prophet of the writ. Because not all prophets were writers of prophecy, such as Elijah. And again, those who write prophecy are guided by one spirit, the Holy Spirit or the Lord himself, like we see often in the Old Testament, where on many occurrences, Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, write, or Yahweh spoke to Isaiah telling him to write. The same with Jeremiah. Thus spoke Yahweh of Elohim of Israel, speaking, write down for you all the words which I have worded to you in a document of enumeration. However, this is not what we see in the book of Revelation. On the contrary, over and over again, we see angels telling John, write this, write that, write what you see, write what you hear. Or the Spirit said write, where the Spirit is not identified as the Holy Spirit. Nor is the Holy Spirit mentioned one time in this epistle. On the contrary, the book of Revelation speaks of many spirits, seven spirits. And nowhere in the entire canon of scripture do we see where angels or other spirits tell men to write. Angels are messengers, they are watchers, irim. And they can show men visions, but they never instruct them to write. And you can't find one verse in the Old or New Testament where an angel tells a man to write, but only in the book of Revelation. And like I said, the phrase Holy Spirit is not even found one single time in the book of Revelation, which should raise yet another red flag as to the authenticity of how this prophecy was carried through one human named John the Divine, through a very spurious personal angel of Jesus, where on the other hand, Paul received his revelation directly from God the Father and Jesus Christ, who appointed him apostle. Galatians 1.1, where in the same chapter, gives warning regarding angels out of heaven, stating, But even if we or an angel out of heaven should well announce to you anything besides that which we well announce to you, let him be anathema, meaning to be set up for pillory, to be exposed for public derision, 
which will occur in the day of judgment and the out-justifying for those who are well-deeming in unrighteousness, as well as fallen angels, which should be a warning for those who are teaching out of this book. And the statement Paul makes regarding an evangel beside that which he or others brought in the same context describes perfectly the book of Revelation because everything in it contradicts what Paul taught concerning the one body and the one new man where there is no Jew, Greek, slave free, male, female, etc. And you see the problem of Gnosticism and mysticism was rampant in Paul's days among those who occultly worshipped angels as they do today. And Gnosticism in Coloss is the very context of Colossians chapter 2, verse 18, and the ritual of the angels that Paul speaks of. And as for the book of Revelation, I believe it is a Gnostic gospel, because Gnostics use the book for themselves. And there are other Gnostic gospels, but this one happened to make its way into the canon. And because the author of the book of Revelation has paid particularly great attention to maintaining Jewish identity, I also believe this epistle falls under the category of what Paul termed a Jewish myth. The word myth itself occurs five times in the New Testament, and it is defined as a false account, something that is posing to be the truth, but it is not. It's a fabrication, a fable, which subverts or replaces what is actually true. And the perfect word is spurious, meaning that it is something that purports to be what it is not. And that the word Jewish is added in front of myths in this one of five occurrences of muthos, transliterated myth, points to the spurious book of Revelation, my friends. And it is not God's spirited prophecy carried under by Holy Spirit. And as for the definition of prophecy according to the Bible's definition, being the foundational word of God itself, prophecy should not be confused with soothsaying, witchcraft dreams and visions of men and divination, hence John the diviner, and those who are boasting in personal visitations through angels and spirits, claiming things which are besides that which the writs communicate to us. And contrary to popular belief, the book of Revelation did not complete the word of God. No, the Lord designated the Apostle Paul as one of the last apostles as a human being, not an angel, to complete the word of God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 25. And as for the revelation, or better, the unveiling of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul did not receive his well-announcement, his evangel, through any man and certainly not a mediating angel, but rather received his eyeable, his seeable apparitions through him. But even so, in Paul's humility, he speaks in the third person as not to boast and gives no such credit to angels in ulterior spirits, stating, I came to be in spirit like John. No, he uses the term harapazo, and who robbed him away, it does not say. And he didn't know whether he was still in his body or not, but he said God knew. But as for Paul's visions and apparitions, he couldn't even speak of them, because what he had heard was forbidden to be spoken. It was not allowed for any human to speak, much less write about. And that Paul was given the ministry to complete the word of God into us, the foundation and basis of prophecy has been laid. And that foundation is Christ. And if anybody else builds on another foundation, well, beware. And it is only later on, in the day of the eon, when the judgment is executed, when after the resurrection has taken stand, God will select his outchosen, who then again will prophesy in dream dreams and see visions, etc. And this will be that transitional period termed the eon of the eon, Hebrews 1.8, and also the day of the eon, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Also, as Peter outlined in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 21, quoting from Joel. But the point being is that we already have the foundational biblical prophecy that was carried through under by the Holy Spirit through holy human, all harmonizing with each other, not where one epistle stands out like a sore thumb, such as Revelation. And the book of Revelation is not the completion of the Word of God, 
for our consideration or thinking. But I'll say this, the book of Enoch is, and I have already found hundreds of parallel verses in harmony with the New Testament writers, the prophets, where the things shown Enoch are encouraging and exciting, not frightening and fear-mongering. So if the book of Revelation is upsetting you, I would repeat the words of Paul, that you be not quickly shaken away from the thinking, but not also be dismayed neither through spirit, nor through word, or through an epistle, meaning ulterior epistles of which are not carried by Holy Spirit. But do think about what I have shared with you in this video, and pray and ask God to unveil the truth to your perception. And until next time, grace, mercy, and peace in our Lord Jesus Christ.